The National Weather Service dispatched survey teams to the areas damaged by the May 20th tornado. After touring the damaged areas in both Moore and Newcastle, experts believe the storm was an EF4 tornado. Now, early reports indicate that wind speeds reached 190 miles an hour and that the storm's path stretched across 17 miles. Volunteers, police and other rescue teams are helping those affected by Monday's devastating storms. There are a number of shelters that have been set up in the area. The Oklahoma's Carrie Coppernall has been visiting with a number of people at the shelters. Carrie joins me on the phone. Carrie, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Now, Carrie, what kind of stories are you hearing? Um, really, everybody that we've been talking to, it's just stories of survival, thankfully. Um, you know, people have um, been seeking shelter with neighbors or in their own shelters. They've had, you know, friends come over or they were not home when it happened. So really, we're just hearing from people who thankfully made it out alive. And, um, you know, what's been fascinating is, as always with tornadoes, and of course, especially with this one, is that there are some homes that are just, you know, flattened to the very base. And then the next door neighbor, their home is fine. Um, so it's just, it's really just random and, and the luck of the draw. And so that's really what we've been hearing today. Oh my goodness. So what are you seeing as you're out there? Well, we, um, you know, there's, a, there's very tight security around the areas that are the heaviest hit, but where traffic is flowing, um, there's just really debris everywhere. I mean, there are shingles that are stuck in fences. There are pieces of, there are pieces of insulation that are hanging from trees. Um, right now we're actually outside of a, um, a cemetery where there are tr down trees and it's just completely littered with things that you would see in, in a home, broken pieces of, of an ice tray and um, things from people's kitchens just sitting out on the ground. Oh, wow. I can't imagine how heart-wrenching that must be to just see that. Um, what, what, what is the police presence like in the affected neighborhoods? Well, it's it's very tight. Um, it's it, it's everywhere that you go, you see an entrance to a neighborhood. Um, you know, this area has a lot of um, neighborhoods that have, you know, just a few entrances. And so they're not gated communities, but the police have a presence where if, if you want to get in, you have to show your ID. And that's what we've been hearing from people who live within those areas. Mm -hmm. You have to show your ID. They're going to check your address to make sure that you actually live within there. So you're you know, they're, they're wanting to keep out people who are wanting just to go and gawk or people who might be looking to loot or anything like that. They're keeping everybody out unless you live there. And um, so it's, it's been pretty slow going getting into the neighborhoods, it, even if you live there. But that's, you know, we, that's the whole point of it. I mean, we're seeing police at entrances to businesses, entrances, you know, even the, the cemetery that we're by right now, there, there's an FBI agent standing guard. Wow. Oh, wow. So very intense, obviously, out there. But that's important. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. it's, it's helping control any type of looting or anything like that. That's right. great. That's great. Well, obviously, you're doing great work out there, Carrie. I'm sure it is devastating and um, heart wrenching. Absolutely. But, you know, at least you said you've heard some stories of hope. That's good. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Carrie, great work out there. Thank you so much. Make sure to stay with NewsOK.com for more information on the tornadoes.